we continue the ballistical magic. So that's chapter 8. If a pentacle were to be made to gain a victory or revenge against one's enemies, as well visible as invisible, the figure may be taken out of the second book of the Maccabees, which is the first one that mentions Judaism historically. That is to say, a hand holding a golden sword drawn down, about which let there be written the versicle there contained, to wit, Take the holy sword, the gift of God, wherewith thou shalt slay the adversaries of my people Israel, or else there may be written about a versicle of the fifth psalm. In this is the strength of thy arm, before thy face there is death, or some other such like versicle. But if you will write a divine name about the figure, and let some name be taken that signifies fear, a sword, wrath, the revenge of God, or some such like name, congruent and agreeing with the effect desired. And if there shall be written any angular figure, let it be taken according to the rule of the numbers, as we have taught, where we have treated of numbers, and the like operations. And of this sort there are two pentacles of sublime virtue and great power, very useful and necessary to be used in consecration of experiments and spirits. One with is that, in the first chapter of the Apocalypse, to wit, a figure of the majesty of God sitting upon a throne, having in his mouth a two-edged sword, as there is described, about which let there be written, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning of the end, which is and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. I am the first and the last, who am living and was dead. And behold, I live for ever and ever, and I have the keys of death and hell. And there shall be written about it these three versicles. And, you know, the Bible does condemn graven images. Graven image, it has nothing to do whether it was worshipped or not. It's, it's you know, a separate commandment, so, uh, supposedly, but how many churches actually follow it? I mean, a lot of them actually, but, you know, relatively few compared to the actual number of them. And even fewer if you look at the percentage of the Christians that that represents. Manda Dius, Virtuti Tua, and so on. Give commandment, O God, to thy strength. Confirm, O God, thy strength in us. Let them be as dust before the face of the wind, and let the angel of the Lord scatter them. And if it's from, uh, by Lord, they mean, of course, Yahweh, not Jesus. Scatter them. Let all their ways be darkness and uncertain, and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. Moreover, let there be written about it the ten general names, which are El, Elohim, Eloheh, Zebaoth, Elion, Eskerki, Adonai, Jah, Tetragrammaton, Sede. So what is that? Al, Aluhim, Aluh, Tzbaut, Aliun, Asher key? I, I don't know what that's supposed to be. I don't remember. Aduni. Yah. Yahweh. Shadi. There is another pinnacle. The figure whereof is like a lamb slain, having seven eyes and seven horns, and under his feet a book sealed with seven seals, as it is in the fifth chapter of the Apocalypse. Run about, let it be written, this versicle, behold, the lion hath overcome of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. I will open the book and unloose the seven seals thereof. In another versicle, I saw Satan, like lightning, fall down from heaven. Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of your enemies, and nothing shall be able to hurt you. And let there also be written about it the ten general names as aforesaid. Well, the pentacles and stuff, they don't really do this stuff, but um, 
perhaps you could say if you believe the message of some things, then you're not hurt. Your body's hurt. Your um, perhaps your mind's hurt, but you, the the spiritual entity, isn't. But those pentacles, which are thus made of figures and names, let them keep this order. For when any figure is posited, conformable to any number, to produce any certain effect or virtue, there must be written thereupon in the se all the several angles some divine name attaining force and efficacy of the thing desired. Yet so, nevertheless, that the name which is of this sort do consist of just so many letters as the figure may constitute a number, are of so many letters of a name as joined together among themselves, may make the number of a figure or by any number which may be divided without any superfluity or diminution. Now such a name being found, whether it be only one name or more of diverse names, it is to be written in all the several angles in the figure. But in the middle of the figure, let the revolution of the name be wholly and totally placed, or at least principally. We likewise constitute pentacles by making the revolution of some kind of name in a square table, and by drawing about it a single or double circle, and writing therein some holy versicle competent and befitting this name, are from which that name is extracted, and this is the way of making the pentacles according to their several distinct forms and fashions, which we may, if we please, either multiply or commix together by course among themselves, to work the greater efficacy, extension, and enlargement of force and virtue. As if a depreciation would be made for the overthrow and destruction of one's enemies, ye are to mind, and call the remembrance how God destroyed the face of the whole earth in the deluge of waters and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, by running down fire and brimstone. Likewise, how God overthrew Pharaoh and his hosts in the Red Sea. It was, of course, the sea. The Greek had a mistranslation there. Um, as if. Uh, depreciation would be made for the overthrow and destruction of one's enemies. Ye are to mind and call the remembrance how God destroyed the face of the whole earth and the deluge of waters and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah by raining down fire and brimstone. Likewise, how God overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. Um, sorry. And call to mind if any other malediction or curse be found in holy red. And thus, in things of the like sort, so likewise, in depreciating and praying against perils and dangers of water, we ought to call to remembrance the saving of Noah and the deluge of waters, the passing of the children of Israel through the Red Sea, no, Reed Sea, and also how we are to mind how Christ walked on the waters, and how he saved the ship in danger from being cast away by the tempest, and how he commanded the winds and the waves, and they obeyed him, and also that he drew Peter out of the water, being in danger of drowning and the like. And lastly, with these we invoke and call upon some certain holy names of God, to wit, such as are significant, significative to accomplish our desires, and accommodated to the desired effect, as if it be to overthrow enemies, we are to invoke and call upon names of wrath, revenge, fear, justice, and fortitude of God. And if we would avoid and escape any evil or danger, we then call upon the names of mercy, defense, salvation, fortitude, goodness, and such like names of God. When likewise we pray to God that he would grant us our desires, we are likewise to intermix therewith the name of some good spirit, whether one only or more whose office it is to execute our desires and sometimes also, we require some evil spirit to restrain or compel, whose name likewise we intermingle, and that rightly, especially if it be to execute any evil work, as revenge, punishment, or destruction. Well, those categories should be considered evil in themselves, right? Furthermore, if there be any versicle in the Psalms or any other part of the Holy Scripture that shall seem congruent and agreeable to thy desire, the same is to be mingled with thy prayers. Now, after 
prayer has been made to God, it is expedient afterwards to make an oration that the executioner, whom in thy precedent prayer to God, ye have desired should administer to ye, whether one or more, or whether he be an angel, or a star, or soul, or any other of the noble angels, but this kind of oration ought to be composed according to the rules which I have delivered in the former part of our work, where we have treated of the manner of the composition of enchantments, and so on. Ye may know farther that these kinds of bonds have a threefold difference, for the first bond is when ye conjure by natural things, the second is compounded of religious mysteries by sacraments, miracles, and things of this sort, and the third is constituted by divine names and holy seals. With these kinds of bonds we may bind not only spirits, but also other creatures, whatsoever as animals, tempests, burnings, floods of waters, the force and power of arms. Also we use these bonds aforesaid not only by conjuration, but sometimes using the means of depreciation and benediction. Moreover, it conduces much to this purpose to join some sentence of Holy Scripture, if any shall be found, convenient thereto, as in the conjuration of serpents by commemorating the curse of the serpents in the earthly paradise and the setting up of the serpent in the wilderness. And further adding that versicle, thou shalt walk upon the asp and the ballast, and so on. Superstition is also of much prevalency herein by the translation of some sacramental rites to bind that which we intend to hinder. As the rites of ex communication of sepulchres, funerals, bearings, and like sort. And, yeah, I've, I've seen so-called Catholic shops, and definitely Catholic shops, you know, inside of Catholic uh, schools and monasteries and, and uh, you know, a shop on the side of the church, and, I mean, li li literally, um, Consecration of magical instruments used in this art. The virtue of consecrations chiefly consists in two things, viz. the power of the person consecrating and the virtue of the prayer by which the consecration is made. For in the person consecrating there is required firmness, constancy, and holiness of life, and that the consecrator himself shall, with a firm and undebatable faith, believe the virtue, power, and effect thereof. Then, in the prayer by which the consecration is made, it derives its virtue either from divine inspiration or else by composing it from sundry places in the Holy Scripture and the commemoration of some of the wonderful miracles of God, effects, promises, sacraments, and sacramental things of which I have abundance in Holy Writ. Well, it's, it's good to form a little list other than just getting out your Strong's concordance, right? Um, but strong, Strong's is pretty, pretty solid. Some of the, some of the indexes, it's like, why don't they have everything in the list, right? Uh, when, in, when you see some index of a scripture, but then there'll be a couple verses in that list that aren't mentioned in some other list, and it's like, I don't know, sounds like some sectarian agenda to me. But let's distinguish between inspiration, actual inspiration, and just you know, brainstorming for ideas. And uh, well, if it's inspiration or revelation what type of entity is conveying it, right? There must likewise be used the invocation of divine names that are significative of the work in hand. Likewise, a sanctifying and expiation which is wrought by sprinkling with holy water, unctions with holy oil, and odoriferous uh, suffumigations, Therefore, in every consecration, there is always used a benediction and consecration of water, earth, oil, fire, and subfumications, you know, incense, and with consecrated wax lights or lamps burning. For without lights, no consecration is duly performed. Well, perhaps in that tradition. Um, you must therefore particularly observe this, that when anything which I call profane is to be used, in which there is any defilement or pollution, it must first of all be purified by an exorcism composed solely for the purpose. And all that, I exercise the creature of salt and all that stuff. It's like, well, why address it to the salt? Just 
do whatever, and if it chases the, the, the whatever out of the salt and everything else, it, it does. Um, you don't have to take the salt as your god and the, oh, the, this piece of oak over here. And, um, oh, and there's some cedar out here, so, um, you know. Which ought to precede the consecration, which things being so made pure are most apt to receive the influences of the divine virtue. You must also observe that at the end of any consecration after the prayer is rightly performed, as I have mentioned, the operator ought to bless the thing consecrated by breathing out some sentence with divine virtue and power of the present consecration with a commemoration of his virtue and authority, that so it may be the more duly performed. And with an earnest and attentive mind, now I shall give ye here some examples that by these a path may be made to the whole perfection thereof. Consecration of water. So in the consecration of water, you must commemorate that God has placed the firmament in the midst of the waters, and likewise that God has placed the fountain of the waters in the earthly paradise, from whence sprang four holy rivers that water the whole earth. Well, we know that's not true now, but likewise we are to remember that God caused the waters to be an instrument of his justice in destroying the giants by bringing on the deluge which covered the face of the whole earth. None of the global floods, not 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 meteor impacts, not not end of ice age stuff, none of them covered the whole earth. You know, they were all coastal stuff or you know, some hills on this side of this country or something, you know. And the overthrow of the host of Pharaoh in the Red Sea. The Red Sea was one of those that got bigger in the flood of Noah. It was, it was itty bitty. The Black Sea really didn't exist. There was a lake there, but, you know, um, the Red Sea, again, there was a lake somewhere in there. But, um, and that God let the children of Israel through on dry land and through the midst of the river Jordan and likewise his marvelous drawing water out of the stony rock and the wilderness, and that at the prayer of Samson he caused water to flow out of the jawbone of a donkey, and likewise that God has made water the instrument of his mercy and salvation for the expiation of original sin, and that Christ was baptized in the river Jordan, and hath thereby sanctified and cleansed the waters. Likewise certain divine names are to be invocated, which are conformable hereto, as that God is a living fountain, living water, a fountain of mercy, and names of the like sort. Consecration of fire. And likewise in the consecration of fire, you were to commemorate that God hath created the fire to be an instrument to execute his justice for punishment, vengeance, and the expiation of sins. Also, when God comes to judge the world, that he will command a conflagration of fire to go before him. Likewise, we are to mention that God appeared to Moses in a burning bush, and also how we went before the children of Israel in a pillar of fire, that nothing can be duly offered, sanctified, or sacrificed without fire, and how that God instituted fire to be kept in continually in the tabernacle of the covenant, and how miraculously he rekindled the same, being extinct and preserved elsewhere from going out, being hidden under the waters, and things of this sort. Likewise, the names of God are to be called upon, which are consonant to this as you read in the law and the prophets that God is a consuming fire and likewise if there are any divine names which signify fire as the glory of God the light of God the splendor and brightness of God and so on now we perhaps link some things to the Hyperborean culture but the among the Mazda Yesneha Zarathustra community Instead of realizing, well, uh, keep your fire burning in your place of worship, you know, you're in a place where there can be frost or snow on the ground for 10 months out of the year, so, you know, um, up in Az Azerbaijan um, or Afghanistan is one of those two places. Um, all these things about not, le uh, about not letting the fire go out and all these extensive rituals for... Uh, having a sacred fire and all this stuff like this. This, this um, kind of got passed on to the Jews. And same thing with the uh, reliance on the priesthood because the uh, rituals became too elaborate 
for just everybody everywhere just to do um, you know except there are five daily prayers with the 17 formulas and all that stuff um, you know the kushti maybe more than that um, or at least the kushti you know but they perform the kushti and then they perform recite a gath and anyways Judaism didn't you know just come out of nowhere it was a mixture of things the uh, consecration of oil and likewise in the consecration of oil and perfumes you are to mention such things as are consonant to this purpose and of the holy anointing oil mentioned in Exodus and divine names significant thereunto such as is the name of Christ which signifies anointed and whatever mysteries there are relative to oil in the scriptures as the two olive trees distilling holy oil into the lamps that burn before the face of God mentioned in Revelations of the Benedict of of the benedictions of lights, lamps, wax, and so on. Now the blessing of the lights, wa uh, lamps, wax, and so on is taken from the fire, and whatever contains the substance of the flame, and whatever similitudes are in the mysteries, as the seven candlesticks which burn before the face of God, therefore I have here given the manner of composing the consecrations, which first of all are necessary to be used in every kind of ceremony, and ought to proceed every experiment or work, and with which nothing in magic rites can be duly performed. In the next place, I will show thee the consecration of places, instruments, and the like things. The consecration of places, ground, circle, etc. Therefore, when you would consecrate any place or circle, you should take the prayer of lamas used in the dedication and consecration of the temple. You must likewise bless the place by sprinkling with holy water and with subjugations, and commemorate in the benedictions holy mysteries, such as these, the sanctification of Thorn of God, Mount Sinai, of the Tabernacle of the Covenant, of the Holy of Holies, the Temple of Jerusalem, and also the sanctification of Mount Golgotha, by the crucifixion of Christ, the sanctification of the Temple of Christ, of Mount Tabor, by the transfiguration and ascension of Christ, and so on, by the invocating of all divine names which are significant in this, such as the place of God, the Thorn of God, the Choir of God, the Tabernacle of God, the Altar of God, the Habitation of God, and the like divine names of this sort, which are to be written about the circle or place to be consecrated, and in the consecration of instruments and every other thing that is used in this art, you must proceed after the same manner by sprinkling with holy water the same, by fumigation, by anointing with holy oil, sealing it with some holy seal, and blessing it with prayer, and by commemorating holy things out of the sacred scriptures and collecting divine names which are agreeable to the things to be consecrated. For example, in the consecration of the sword, we are to remember in the gospel, he that hath two coats, and so on, and that in the second, uh, the Maccabees, it is said that a sword was divinely and miraculously sent to Judas Maccabeus, and if there is any thing of the like in the prophets, as take unto you two-edged swords, and so on, and you shall also in the same manner consecrate experiments and books and whatever of the like nature as writings, pictures, and so on, by sprinkling, perfuming, anointing, sealing, blessing with holy commemorations, and calling to remembrance the sanctification of mysteries as the table of the Ten Commandments which were delivered to Moses by God in Mount Sinai, the sanctification of the Old and New Testaments. Um, the Jews would never call their scripture the Old Testament, and Jesus in the so-called New Testament is said to refute that idea. He came not to do away with any of the law, but to clarose, you know, the clarosa, uh, you know, the um, refurbish it. So he came to bring it back. But, of course, we're talking about bringing it back to the um, the things the prophet said. So not even uh, uh, the various prophets, um, messiahs, Emmanuel's Christ, whatever you want to call him, the prophet is the word for all uh, for all of these types of things. Nabi, um, Avatari, um, but for the most part, it was just okay. What had those who were laps, and what were those who were too conservative about to do? Because that, that's what I mean by liberals: the people who set aside some of their own, uh, set, set aside some of the beliefs and practices for the sake of their own personal tastes or, you know, some popular opinion or something. 
and likewise of the law, prophets, and scriptures. It's one thing to allow people to have their own beliefs and practices or not. It's another thing to, you know. And likewise of the law, prophets, and scriptures, which were promulgated by the Holy Ghost, and again, there are to be mentioned such divine names as are convenient to this, as these are the testament of God, the book of God, the book of life, the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God, and the like. And with such kind of rites as these, it's the personal consecration performed. There are besides these another rite of consecration, of great power and efficacy, and this is one of the kinds of superstition, viz. when the rite of consecration, or collection of any sacrament in the church, is transferred to that thing which we would consecrate. It must be noted that vows, oblations, and sacrifices have the power of consecration also, as well real as personal, and they are, as it were, certain conventions between those names with which they are made, and us who make them strongly cleaving to our desire and wished effects, as when we sacrifice with certain names are things as fumigations, functions, rings, images, mirrors, and some things less material, as characters, seals, pentacles, enchantments, orations, pictures, scriptures, of which we have largely spoken of before. Of the invocation of evil spirits and the binding of and con constraining of them to appear. Now, if thou art desirous of binding any spirit to a ready obedience to thee, I will show you how a certain book may be made by which they may be invoked, and this book is to be consecrated, a book of evil spirits, ceremoniously to be composed in the name and order whereunto they bind with a certain holy oath and ready and present obedience of the spirit. This book is therefore to be made of the most pure and clean paper, which is generally called virgin paper, and this book must be inscribed after this manner, viz. Let there be drawn on the left side of the book the image of the spirit, and on the right side thereof his character with the oath above it, containing the name of the spirit, his dignity and place, with his office and power. Yet many magicians do compose this book otherwise, omitting the characters and images, but I think that it is much more efficacious not to neglect anything above mentioned in the forms. Nowadays, it's much more common of a thing. Oh, oh, paper that's never been used to write or draw other things. Okay, well, you know, um, there is likewise to be observed the circumstances of places, times, hours, according to the stars which these spirits are under and are seen to agree with, their sight, right, and order being applied. Which book, being so written, is to be well bound, adorned, garnished, embellished, and kept secure, with registers and seals, lest it should happen after the consecration to open in some part not designed to endanger the operator? And, above all, let this book be kept as pure and reverent as possible, for irreverence of mind causes it to lose its virtue by pollution and profanation. Now, this sacred book, being thus composed according to the form and manner I have delivered, you are to consecrate it after a twofold way. The first is that all and singularly each of the spirits who are written in the book may be called to the circle according to the rites magical which we have before taught, and place the book which is to be consecrated in a triangle on the outside of the circle, then read in the presence of the spirits all the oaths which are contained and written in that book, then the book to be consecrated, being already placed without the circle in a triangle, they are drawn, compel all the spirits to impose their hands where their images and characters are drawn, and to confirm and consecrate the same with a special and common oath. This being done, let the book be shut and preserved, as I have spoken before, then license the spirits to depart according to the due right and magical order. There is another method extant among us of consecrating a general book of spirits, which is more easy and of as much efficacy to produce every effect, except in opening this book, the spirits do not always appear visible, and this way is thus. Let be made a book of spirits, and we have before soon, but in the end thereof write invocations, bonds, and strong conjurations, wherewith every spirit may be bound. Then, bind this book between two lumens or tables, and on the inside thereof draw or let be drawn two holy pentacles of the divine majesty which I have before set out of the apocalypse, then let the first of them be placed in the beginning of the book and the second at the end of the same.
and I would strongly the um, of keeping spiritual diaries, spiritual notebooks, as in like purely spiritual notebooks. Now you can keep your notes elsewhere, but uh, but put them back. Uh, you know, make a copy of them elsewhere. Now, out of these spiritual uh, notebooks and diaries, you can compose grimoires. But a grimoire is not the same as some occult book. It's, it's uh, you know, how to do some ritual. How to operate a spiritual system.